In this video, we are going to learn about database destination in Centerprise. To create a database destination, we go to the destinations and drag and drop a database table destination. I already have a source that is Excel source inside my data flow. And let's preview the data. It contains data about customers. And now my goal is to move this data inside a database table. So let's go ahead and examine the database destination here. If I go to the properties of database destination, the very first page here is asking us about database connection credentials. You can specify a database information or if you want you can use a shared connection from inside the data flow. In this case, we're going to specify a database information. From the data provider, you can pick what is your database type, such as SQL Server, Oracle, DB2, Sybase, and so on and so forth. In this case, my database table is in SQL Server database, so I'm going to pick SQL Server as data provider, and uh, then specify my user ID, password, server name, and so on and so forth. Depending on what data provider you pick, the user interface will change and it will ask you about the credential pieces that are required for that particular data provider. Say for example, my data provider is Salesforce. In that case, it will ask me about, along with the user ID and password, it will ask me about the, the security token and all that. Let's go back to our original data provider, that is SQL Server, and specify the information, my user ID and password, and name of the, my server. And as soon as I pick that, I can click on database and it populates this drop down by the databases inside this server. I'm going to pick the Northwind database, specify a schema, and then test the connection. You can see here the test completed successfully. Click on OK. And now we are ready to go to the next page. We go to the next page. And this is where we specify the details about the table. At the top, there are two options. The first option is if you want to pick an existing table or you can create a new table or if the table exists already, it will drop that table and create a new table. So if you pick a table, click on that and uh, in the drop down, you can go ahead and pick your table. I already have the customers table and you can see here it is the dbo.customers. However, if I wanted to create a new table, I'll pick this option and type in the name of the new table that I wanted to create. For the existing table, there is an option to truncate the table. That means it is going to take away all the existing data from the table and put the only new data. At this point, you can see here this little icon. By clicking on this icon, you can view the real data from inside this table. If you click on this uh, little drop down button here, it shows you the options to view data, view schema, a view in database browser. This is the integration with the database browser inside the product. So if I click on view data, it runs the SQL query and shows me the real data from inside the table. Let's go back to the data flow and uh, let's look at other options. So the next option is defining input ports for mapping. Since it is a destination, it is going to receive data from the sources and uh, it is going to receive data from the sources using the maps. So now let's define that how these maps will be coming into the destination using what kind of ports. The default option is individual ports for actions. And uh, that means for each of these actions, it will add individual ports inside the tree. By default, it's only insert. However, if you check update, delete, or absurd depending on wherever it is available it is going to add one node each for each of these options if you have picked update in that case of you have to specify the matching key based on which it is going to to perform the update let's go ahead and uh, pick the customer id that is the primary key for the update alternatively i can choose single port and it is used in the cases where it is already decided that which record is going to be inserted, which record is going to be updated, and so on and so forth. That means if, if for each of the records, the 
strategy is decided about insert, delete, or update, and then it is coming into destination, in that case, you'll be using single port. It is used in conjunction with mostly database write strategies, such as your CDC hash, data-driven, or diff processor. For the regular inserts or updates, you'll be using these individual ports. The next set of options is database options, such as if you want to preserve system generated key values, if you want to use transactions, if you want to use transactions in that case, so if you want to commit transactions on completion or rollback if there are any errors. Then there are options about treating the null strings and null numeric values. If you check this option, Centerprise is going to treat null strings at zero length strings. Similarly, null numeric values will be treated as zero values if you check this option. Then the next set of options are data load options. Centerprise supports bulk insert for all our standard connectors such as SQL Server, Oracle, DB2, Sybase, and MySQL. That means it is going to take a bulk of data and make a single trip to the database to insert the entire set. And this is what you're specifying here. Use bulk insert with a batch size of 10,000. You can change the size of the batch and depending on the batch size, application is going to take that batch and send it to the database. The next option is uh, use bulk insert with all records in one batch. Then the last option is use single record insert. And this, is, this option is useful when you're dealing with a very small set of data. These options are pertinent to bulk insert and uh, these flags are used by the database bulk writer. You can see here uh, there are options such as keep identity, check constraints, table lock, keep nulls, fire triggers, use internal transaction and all that. And these options will keep changing depending on the database you are writing into. So these are the options about uh, picking the table and writing into the database. You go to the next step and it shows you the layout for the destination. That means this is how your table structure is. Depending on your choice of table, whether you are creating a new table or writing into existing table, the role of layout grid changes. Because if you are writing into an existing table, the layout is showing you the existing structure of the table. You cannot alter it. However, if you are writing into a new table, in that case, you can change the layout here and it's going to create the layout based on whatever you chose here. So say for example, I go back and say that in place of pick table, create a new table and call it dbo.customers123. In this case, I'm creating a new table. For a new table, this is the structure that is going to be used. I can change the column names such as uh, I call the facts as facts1 and add a new column and uh, let's call it facts2. So in this case it is going to create one more column and it's going to call it facts2. Uh, you can change your data types, you can change your db types, you can change the length of the fields, you can specify the decimal places, you can specify anything about the schema of the table such as allows null or not, which one is the primary key, if it is system generated or not, if it can insert, can update and all that. So these options you can specify here and based on these options your table will be created. So the layout screen becomes very important when you're creating a new table. Let's go back and uh, put it back to the pick table and uh, pick our customers because uh, we want to see how individual ports work. The port of update and delete will only work with an existing table, not with a new table. So we pick the existing table of customers and leave the individual ports for action. Go to the next step, see the layout, and uh, go to the last step. Uh, this is for the comments. This is standard page for all the wizards. Click on OK, and our destination is ready. Let's go ahead and expand this chevron. You can see here uh, it has added insert, update, and delete. It has three nodes, and all three nodes have all the items from the layout. So if you want to insert certain records, 
you'll go ahead and map those onto the insert. That means all these records flowing from Excel, they're going to go and get inserted inside this table. However, if I wanted to update records inside existing table, I would use the update and map only onto update. So this is the idea that depending on whatever action you want to perform inside the database destination, you'll pick that port to map onto. Let's go back to the properties and uh, change the individual ports, and leave it only as insert and click on OK. And as a result, you can see here it has taken away the other two nodes for update and delete. Now we have only insert. We go ahead and map it to the insert. Now you can see here there are maps for each of the insert nodes. Then along with the nodes to accept data, database destination also has output. That means after inserting into the database table, you can pass on the same data for further processing inside the data flow. So this is how you deal with the database destination inside Enterprise. Thanks for watching this video.